More than 250 million vehicles travel America's roads each year. That means there are over 1 billion tires rolling annually on our roads and highways. Most Americans don't give much thought to where the rubber used in their tires comes from. But that could change based on work by a team of innovative scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs from the public and private sectors who recently completed a comprehensive study to assess an alternative to the natural rubber commonly used in tires today. Their work was done under the Biomass Research and Development Initiative, or BRDI grant. This $6.9 million five-year grant was awarded in 2012 by the United States Department of Agriculture to Cooper Tire and Consortium Partners, including the Agriculture Research Service of the USDA, Cornell University, Pan Aridus, and Clemson University. To understand why this group was assembled and tasked with studying a natural rubber alternative for the tire industry, it's important to have some background. Virtually all tires today are produced with natural rubber from the Hevea tree, which is grown in a fairly limited geography close to the equator in countries like Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Hevea trees do not produce rubber until they've been in the ground about seven years, and they must be hand tapped to extract rubber from them, much like syrup is tapped from maple trees. More than 27 billion pounds of Hevea natural rubber was produced last year, and over 70% of that rubber was used in the tire industry. It's one of the largest raw material purchases made by tire companies, and it is subject to broad price fluctuations, geopolitical uncertainties, and other concerns like disease and drought. One looming issue is that there may not be enough Hevea to go around in the future. Experts say global demand for tires will double in the coming three decades to about 2 billion units per year as regions such as China and India begin consuming tires in great quantities, with drivers buying their first vehicles in densely populated regions. They warn that the tire industry's ability to meet that demand could be limited by a lack of natural rubber. In fact, a 2015 study noted that up to 21 million acres of additional rubber plantations will be required to meet demand for Hevea natural rubber by 2024. Expansion on this scale could have serious biodiversity impacts. Yet Hevea natural rubber has some unique properties that make it a superior material for use in tires and difficult to replace with synthetic rubber. For example, Hevea rubber reduces heat buildup, which improves tire performance, tread wear, and fuel economy. It also offers strong crack and fatigue resistance. But is there possibly a better natural rubber option for use in tires that mitigates the potential risks associated with Hevea while performing as well as Hevea in tires? The BRDI team's work proves that there may indeed be, in the form of a scruffy little shrub with a funny name, Wayuli. Wayuli grows in the southwestern United States and Mexico. For more than a century, U.S. scientists and entrepreneurs have tried to come up with a way to end America's dependence on imported rubber and have studied the Wayuli plant with great interest. Among them was inventor Thomas Edison. Even the U.S. government got involved with a project during World War II to develop Wayuli as a viable substitute for Hevea. Wayuli did not take off for several reasons, including the fact that no one had ever assembled the right team to study the entire Wayuli value chain, starting at the plant's genome and progressing to best agricultural practices such as irrigation to maximize plant growth and rubber output, all the way through harvesting the plant, extracting the latex, producing tire-grade rubber, using that rubber in concept tire production as well as testing the tires, and finally, conducting comprehensive life cycle analysis to assess the environmental impact of Wayuli as a replacement for Hevea for use in tires. No one had ever done this until now. The BRDI grant team put it all together for the first time in history. The USDA ARS worked on identifying the Wayuli genome and collaborated with Cornell University researchers to identify tools which will locate the genes responsible for key plant traits such as increased rubber yield. Hevea trees take seven years to start producing rubber, but as consortium member Pan Aridus found, Wayuli grows for just two years before it can be chopped off at the base, baled, crushed, and processed to extract latex. In addition, rather than harvesting by hand like Hevea, Wayuli can be mechanically harvested and regrown from the stump annually for several more years. 
along with rubber, Wayuli produces resin that shows promise to be used in adhesives, flavoring, and fragrances. And the woody material left over from the plant, the bagasse, can be converted into fuel that burns at the same BTU as coal without coal's pollution. Clemson University concluded in its life cycle analysis that Wayuli has a smaller environmental footprint than conventional tires. There could be virtually no waste in the Wayuli process. But what about Wayuli's performance in tires? Cooper Tire, the leader of the BRDI consortium, spent the past five years completing comprehensive tire builds using Wayuli. The Cooper team built each relevant tire component, such as tread, sidewall, and bead, using Wayuli, and systematically tested each for performance in tires. In all, they produced over 450 tires with Wayuli and tested them in the lab, running over 750,000 miles on test wheels. But Cooper also evaluated tires made with Wayuli outside the lab in real-world driving conditions at its test track near San Antonio, Texas. In controlled tests, pitting conventional tires made with Hevea and synthetic rubber against those where all of the natural and synthetic rubber in the tires was replaced with Wayuli, the results showed that Wayuli performed as well as Hevea in functions such as wear and cold weather performance, while providing better fuel economy and wet stopping distance than the conventional tire. So, what started rather quietly in 2012 as a group effort involving a disparate collection of researchers with an ambitious goal to achieve what even Thomas Edison could not, has ended in 2017 with resounding success as the BRDI grant team concluded its work. The team demonstrated that Wayuli can be used effectively in tires and in fact offers numerous potential advantages over Hevea. With proof of concept in hand from the BRDI team, what is the future of the scruffy little shrub that could in the tire industry? Will all of us soon be driving on tires made of Wayuli that's grown, processed, and manufactured in the U.S.? That's a very intriguing question. To make Wayuli a reality in the tire industry, we'll need large-scale agriculture. To make even a dent in U.S. natural rubber demand, Wayuli must be planted on hundreds of thousands of acres and grown and harvested over multiple growing seasons. Infrastructure to process Wayuli into rubber. We must demonstrate that rubber production can be achieved on a fully industrial scale and with manufacturing methods that achieve a uniform quality of rubber suitable for tires. Pricing equivalent to Hevea for the tire industry. Economic scale and efficiencies will be necessary in the growth and production of Wayuli for it to be competitive with Hevea in the tire industry. Use of the co-products is essential. The resin that is extracted along with the rubber from the Wayuli plant has promise for use in many other industries and businesses. That future must be developed along with applications for the woody Wayuli residue left after processing the rubber. Finally, tire manufacturing plants must be adjusted to accommodate Wayuli natural rubber processing as opposed to Hevea. Wayuli's time may finally have come but its future as a catalyst for a new U.S. agricultural and processing industry that could create thousands of jobs remains an unwritten one. There is no doubt that government support will be needed and cooperation between the tire industry and other industries will be required. Therefore, only time will reveal Wayuli's next chapter.